does my work reflect my heritage? It, it addresses um, issues that are current in Indian country, social issues and political issues, and issues that face us as Native people. And um, I do that particular type of work because my ancestors fought for me to be here. They went through removals, they went through assimilation, and I feel like it's my job and an opportunity for me to educate people about what's happened um, to us as Native people, what is happening currently um, in the Native communities. Um, w one of the issues is the murdered and missing Indigenous women and children. And um, it's a very underreported issue, and a lot of people are very surprised when they learn about it. So I include that in my work, so it gives me an opportunity when I'm at a show for people to ask questions. And like I said, I can educate them on what's going on. The other issue is the Dakota Access Pipeline and the fight for keeping uh, pipelines from going under our rivers. Uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline goes under the Missouri River and it doesn't just affect Native people, it affects all of us if there's oil in our water. Uh, I address issues that deal with the boarding school, uh, homelessness, Native rights, all, all different types of issues. Uh, well, I am a photographer and a bee work artist. And in my photography, first of all, I shoot with black and white film and I hand develop my own images. So even though I could manipulate the negative or make a digital file out of the negative, you can always go back to my negative for historical reasons and see that what I shot was there. And so what I do is I go out, for instance, and photograph um, protest against the pipeline. Um, I take pictures of old boarding schools. So th through my work, you can see those things. The uh, 50th anniversary of the occupation of Alcatraz took place this past year. I photographed that and I had actually done an exhibit on the island, uh, a retrospective of the occupation. Uh, so my work was on the island for about three months, educating people. And it, um, the occupation was a real turning point for Native people. It gave a voice to Native people. And then in my beadwork, I traditionally, all these years have done, made, earrings and necklaces and bracelets and although they're contemporary I use traditional stitches to do them but several years ago I decided that I wanted to tell the story through beadwork so I decided to make uh, old samplers and that's how women or, or girls were taught in the past how to sew and to count and to learn their alphabet, they would do needlepoint, which were called samplers. So now I've started doing those out of beadwork and they all tell a story and they're all pretty complicated, addressing different issues. And um, one of the issues that I addressed was the fact that there's a federal law that determines who is and who is not a native artist, who can legally sell their work as Native made. And Oklahoma uh, passed a bill limiting who could sell their work as Native made. So I challenged the state of Oklahoma and um, eventually won that lawsuit and their law was found to be unconstitutional because it was contrary to the federal law. However, while we were challenging Oklahoma, Missouri decided to pass the same bill. So now we're challenging Missouri and waiting for the outcome of that suit.
Indian country, there's so much politics and there's so much infighting and, you know, people um, usually glorify, oh, you're native. And it's one of my uncles one time said, well, who, who wants to be native? You know, because there's so many things attached to being a native person that um, for the most part people don't see. And that's why I like to bring awareness to it. These are my friends who are my family. And especially this year with COVID going on, all of our shows have been canceled. So we don't see anybody. And although we talk to each other and we FaceTime each other, um, we, don't, we don't get to physically be together. And, and um, so it's really important for me to be a part of this. And it's also, I'm real appreciative of the gallery for um, exhibiting all of our work um, so that people can see our work and, and learn about our work and learn about the issues and why we create our work. To me, it's all the same. There, there's not, they mesh together. There's no line, you know, that this is this or this is that. And um, I'm always photographing. My friends joke and they call me a drive-by shooter because I see something and I'll jump out of the car and take a picture and I'm gone again. Because I, I think personally that I see things that other people might not see and I want to... I want you to see that. I want you to see what I'm seeing. And so I'm able to use my photography. And I feel like a lot of times I'm able to give those that don't have a voice a voice. And um, I do a lot of shooting for homelessness. Uh, I've done all the, not all the, but spontaneous graves that pop up along our highways because those people are just unaccounted for and f forgotten about by the general population. So to me, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a native person all the time. I'm an artist all the time. It's not a nine to five job, it's who I am.